Hello everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Nauri Radwan and today I'm back with a new tutorial. I have been using this method lately to paint light on my artworks and I personally think this is the best way to do it. It's going to make the lighting on your artwork more accurate. Also, it's going to make the process of painting light more enjoyable. Now, of course, it's going to be taking more time, but the more time you spend on your artwork, the better the outcome will be. I have said enough already. So without any further ado, let's start with this tutorial. I have posted this uh, animation on our group on Facebook. If you haven't joined yet, uh, I will leave the link in the description so you can join and be a part of this community. When I posted this artwork, I posted these three types of lighting. Let's start with the original cut. This is the original cut of this uh, soldier right here. I will leave all of the stock images that I used in uh, this tutorial in the description. First, I start with the flat lighting. And I said before, this type of lighting uh, should never be on your artwork because uh, it's just flat. It doesn't feel right. It feels like you just uh, grab a brush and start to paint randomly on the uh, edges. It covers the lighting area. It covers the shadows, the highlights. It's just a mess. Try your best to avoid this type of lighting. Second, we have the gradient lighting. It's basically when, uh, when you use the gradient map like this, and you mask it out and you start to paint in the middle of uh, your object. Again, I don't like this type of lighting as well because, because it just adds the color to the highlights and it leaves the shadows, which is not painting a light, it's just coloring the light. But the last way and the best way is to paint the light manually. And as you can see, uh, of course, I did not take my time with this image and paint everything. I just painted these areas right here, as you can see, this areas right here on the uh, gun and his arm and his face. I did that manually using the brush, the soft brush, and I just start to paint. But here's the way and how, you, how to do it. And let me just tell you how this method works. So. Basically, when you have an object, and let's say we have this rock right here, or this stone, and I want to paint the light on it. Basically, you just grab the brush and you start to paint like that. Of course, on a new layer. Now, this is a flat painting. To give this flat painting a depth, what you will need to do is to use the razor which is by clicking E shortcut on the keyboard and you just start to paint on its edges. And as you can see, that gave this rock a depth. However, if I'm going to paint on this area beneath it, like that, and I want to give a depth to the uh, other area that I painted, and to do this, I'm going to use the eraser. But here's the issue with this way. As you can see, when I'm erasing the other area that I painted, it's affecting the uh, first area that I paint. To avoid this issue, what you will need to do is to add a new layer to every flat painting that you paint. And then you go and add a new layer and you paint. And this way, you will not affect the other area while you are painting on the second area. Now let's do a quick test on this rock before we continue to the other images. What I will do is I'm going to choose the soft brush and I'm going to increase the hardness to 50%. And that's by clicking and holding Alt and then the right mouse button and then moving, it, uh, moving the mouse to the top and to the bottom or forward and backward. So I'm going to uh, click on our shortcuts to add the new layer. Then I'm going to paint on that area right here. To increase the size of the brush and decrease it, you will uh, hold Alt and the right mouse button and then moving it to the right and to the left. After finishing painting, I'm going to click on E shortcut for the eraser and I'm going to paint the edges like that.
Now, of course, because it's a tutorial and I need to be quick, I'm not going to paint everything, but I will show you what to do next. After you finish painting all of the layers, the next step is to select all of them, then click Ctrl E to merge them. Now we have this layer right here. The next step is go to layer, layer mask, and click from transparency. That will add a mask from that painting that we did. What you will need to do here is go to the filter, camera raw filter, then slide down all the way to the grain effect, add just a bit of grain, increase the size just a bit and the roughness. That will add uh, some noise to your painting to make it more realistic, then click OK. Now that we have it as a mask, add a exposure adjustment layer and click and hold Alt, then click on the mask and grab it to the exposure mask. That will replace the layer mask, click yes. Now we have this exposure adjustment layer with the mask that we painted. Add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and clip it to that exposure layer. With the exposure layer, you will affect the light of the rock. And with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, you will colorize it. You will colorize it, sorry. You will add the color to it. If you feel like an area is too bright, what you can do is add another hue and saturation adjustment layer and decrease the lightness. Then turn that mask of the hue and saturation layer to the, uh, to the black color by clicking Control I. Then go to the brush and with a white soft brush, paint on that area that is too bright. You can go further and click on that exposure and the two hue and saturation adjustment layer and duplicate it by clicking and holding Alt, then dragging them at the top. Then click on the mask of the exposure layer right here, turn it to screen blender mode, then click on Control L, that will bring the levels menu, then take the slide all the way to the right side. What that does is if I click and enter the mask, it shrinks the mask. This is the first mask, as you can see, and this is the second one. It, make it, it will make it tighter. And you can click Control L and make it even more tighter like this. The reason why I did all of that, because the first uh, exposure adjustment layer is going to be for the soft light. The second one is going to be for the hard light, as you can see before and after. It added more highlights to that rock. I'm going to use the technique now on this portrait. I got this from the Adobe stock. All the links are going to be down in the description. And of course, you can use it on your portraits or any object that you work on. So I'm going to add the new layer by clicking on the shortcut. Then with a soft brush and 20% flow, I'm going to decrease, uh, I'm going to increase the hardness and I'm going to start painting on the areas that the light should uh, reach. Then of course, using the eraser, I'm going to erase from areas that, and by the way, just a quick note. Do not use the eraser in a random way. Do not just click on E and start to erase uh, at random areas. Put the mouse cursor on his nose uh, between the highlights and the midtones, and then you can decide the hardness of the brush, and that's by clicking and holding Alt and the right mouse button, and then moving the mouse forward and backward. Forward and backward, sorry. And you can stop where you can see that the hardness of the brush matches with the hardness of the transition between the highlights and the midtones of the uh, of the area that you are painting on. Okay, and then we start to erase as I said before. Then add a new layer, and then paint again. And when you finish, merge the layers, then go to layer, click on layer mask and click on, and then click on from transparency, click on the mask, go to filter, camera raw filter, then add the grain effect just a bit with the size and the roughness. Then click OK. Then add an exposure adjustment layer and move the mask to it. Add hue and saturation adjustment layer and add colorize. 
you can decide whatever color you like and here you can decide the lighting that you want to add and of course if you are working on a portrait that uh, of a man that has beard for example you can click two times on the exposure adjustment layer and then take the slide of the underlying layer to the left side just like that and we are finished and then you can do that to the other areas as well for this example i got this deer right here and i changed the uh, lighting of this image right here and i wanted to uh, give the feeling that the light is coming from the top areas and to match the highlights of the deer with the uh, rest of the image i used the same technique first i made it dark and i matched the colors then I painted right here using the same technique on his uh, bottom areas and that's to add the reflection of the light of the water on his uh, bottom areas or bottom body then I added this paint right here from the top to add the highlights of the uh, sunlight with a curves adjustment layer to add the uh, color of the warmth of the sun and channel mixer to just to add just a bit of a the cool color which is the blue hopefully you guys understood how this method works and trust me guys as soon as you start to use it you will realize the difference This is the end of this video. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so. Also follow us on our social medias and don't forget to get my Digital Landscape Reloaded course where you can find advanced tutorials, tips and methods just like this. And without any further ado, I will see you in the next tutorials. Peace.